Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It's so good to see you. I am so glad that you are here. I hope you're well and you're taking care of yourselves, especially in these trying times, child, okay? But I really hope you're well and you're looking after yourselves and you're taking care of yourselves. Before we get started, you know it's, it's the books, it's the books, right? Uh, before we get started, I really would love it if you would subscribe to the channel, click the bell, like the video. This really, really helps get me a long ways away into uh, just getting out there, getting recommended more by YouTube. So I really would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. Also, share and repost, whether on Instagram, Twitter, I don't, it's, it's fine. Like you would be doing the absolute most for me. I really would appreciate it. Thank you so much. Anywho... This is for the book lovers. You know I will never forget the book lovers because I'm a book lover myself. But the truth is, oh, I've got a green smoothie here because I haven't eaten, guys, and I've been filming all day. But the truth is, the reality is, um, I haven't been reading much lately. Um, I'm in a little bit of a reading slump. I've literally only read, I don't know, since my last book video, maybe I've read three books or something like that so it's really really tough for me to do a wrap-up kind of video so I'm just gonna put that one aside however I am going to recommend books for some of you who are watching this video because you love my channel but you're not that much of a reader but you want to get into reading I know I get a lot of those comments quite a bit that say that oh, you know what I really want to get into reading I really want to get into you know you you make me want to read so I've got recommendations of what you can read that will get you into that space, sweetie. That space that's just like, ooh, I love this book, I'm gonna pick up another book. That kind of space. Guys, most of you guys that are here really love reading and you get a lot out of reading. I told you guys that hot girls read. They read. I, I, I'm just, while you, while you ponder on that, hot girls read, sweetie. Hot mm -hmm. girls read, sweetie. But. Here I am, I'm going to give you some great recommendations of books that you can read that are one, easy to read, so it's not gonna be hard uh, literary fiction that's really going to be uh, hard to understand, comprehend, because there are books that are like that. These ones, really easy to read, flow easily, uh, but are also great storylines, uh, storylines um, uh, concerning identity, concerning love, concerning, I'm looking at the books right now, um, some of them are just normal adult contemporary fiction, some of them are slightly darker, uh, for those people who are like myself, who love to read really dark novels, <laughs> I'm kind of weird like that, what, what does it say about me, anyway, um, so I've got six books here that I'm going to recommend to you, two of which are thriller novels, that are easy into the thrill escape, so it's not uh, things that are hard and deep and dark like Karen Slaughter vibes. No, it's something slightly easier that you can read and enjoy um, And it actually just pulls you to reading again The first recommendation I have for you is everything I never told you now. This is one of my favorite novels I've got a lot of favorite novels, okay? But this one is one of my favorite novels. This is by Celeste Ng, N-G, Ng. And it follows the life of a young 16-year-old girl uh, by the name of Lydia. Now, the book opens with it telling us Lydia is dead. So, Lydia is found dead. At the beginning of the book, you're already wondering, what, 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 what Lydia, what the hell? What, what happened, right? So you already want to know, what, what is this all about? So it follows a Chinese-American family, Lydia's family, um, and it follows their life, their dynamic. So this one looks at uh, family dynamics, family politics, politics, um, the struggles that um, immigrant families are faced with in the United States, uh, but also it has very difficult topics, very triggering topics like suicide, um, uh, uh, very difficult topics like, you know, just reading about um, parents, toxicity among parents and their children and all of that, but really so well written, Fla not flowery, did I say flowery? Jeez, idyllic, symbolic, and just lyrical writing. It is so beautifully written, and also at the same time, very easy to understand, which I feel like is something that is so important for somebody who is getting into reading to start with, 
you don't want to start with a book like the Only Indian by Stephen Graham Jones. That's really a hard book to read. It's going to be hard. You're going to be reading page and page and being like, what? And then having to reread. You want something that's really, really easy to start off with when you are uh, trying to get back into reading. And this does a very, very good job with that. So it looks at uh, identity, searching for identity, family dynamics, um, toxicity among parents and their children, and um, also tackles very, very difficult subjects as well, like suicide and all of that. Really great book, written so, so well. It's not even that long. It's about 290 pages, so it really isn't that long. But look, if you're new to reading or you want to try, it might take you a while to get through it, but it is worth it. It is so, so worth it. It's one of my favorite books, and I love the fact that the spine is yellow. It's one of my favorite books. Um, so definitely do try it out. She is the author of Little Fires Everywhere. If you um, watched it, the one with Kerry Washington, the series, she wrote this. This was her first novel. The next book is... Ah, it's one of the books that I recently finished. Again, definitely going to make it into my top 10 of this year. Definitely going to make it. This is A Man Called Uva or Over. Ova. Uva. Uh, this is by Frederick, Fred, Frederick, Frederick Bachman. And he is um, the author of Anxious People. He's written quite a number of novels. But this one... Oh, it's so beautiful. It follows the story of a man called Uva. And Uva is this just grumpy old man who uh, lives in an estate where he just doesn't like people. He just doesn't like being around people. And this is due to uh, something that has happened. And it's just really changed who he is. Um, it just doesn't like people. But at the same time, he's got this really soft hearted nature about him he just really genuinely is a good person again the story opens with um something having happened like uber something happens i can't give it away because it is a it would be a big spoiler of the book but it shows his um it talks about his life and it's in dual time spans so uh when he was younger and when he is right now currently in the book he's in his 50s 60s 50s and um, it just shares his life with the people his everyday affairs with the people that live in the estate with him and a tiny little cat that becomes his friend and all of that it's so good it's so heartwarming it's so it's it's themes of love and loss and grief and and um just finding ways to smile again and it's just so beautifully written that you can't not help but fall in love with this novel it's such a beautiful book and i really do recommend that you read it again. um again this one isn't that long as well this is about 283 pages so 10 10 pages less than that one um but really great it'll make you so warm and fuzzy inside that you're gonna want to read again like it's gonna put you in that space of like, oh my god this is so beautiful are there actually books like this out there oh my god oh my god <laughs> you you're gonna love it so definitely check this book out really really enjoyed it i tabbed quite a bit in this book as well because there are passages there are lines and sentences that will make your heart melt that that's how good this book really is so i definitely highly recommend that you read this one if you're trying to share. yeah all right i think so ah come on how about some writing for the next book is an anthology. And now, if you are a lover of love, hmm? if you are a lover of love, if you are a romantic at heart, but also if you are a lover of black love and you love to celebrate black love, I highly recommend that you read this book. This is Love and Color by Bolu Babalola. Firstly, that cover that cover this is an anthology that celebrates love it's got i think maybe nine stories in it let me see i think it's got about nine 
no it's definitely more than nine but essentially this book follows african love from different parts of the african continent but also there's some from you know there's an arabic story in there as well so different parts of the world however she took um, mythical tales that have been told in various parts of the African continent and wherever else that they come from Arabic uh, countries and all of that and she spun them and uh, she put them into a story format beautifully well written stories that you would find familiar if you are from certain parts of the world you'd be like oh my god i've heard a story like this but she's also written uh new stories that are completely hers and she also added them into this it celebrates black love it celebrates how love comes in different shapes and forms it celebrates how um women being strong and independent can also be um warm and soft to love as well it's just so beautiful we did a review of this book for my book club uh brown skin reads which i have since just taken a break on the book club because i've been so busy however yay luna this book is amazing and it is definitely something that will get you to want to read more, especially when it comes to anthologies and things like that. You're really going to appreciate this book, but um, it's great because it's easy to read. I got through this book really, really quickly, uh, probably like in two or three days, which is typically my time span for books. Again, also short. This is 285 pages, so really isn't that long. But I do know that for somebody who's going to be starting out, it might take you a little bit longer to read, which is fine, but you will enjoy it. And the nice thing about anthologies is that you can read one story, put it away, take a break. Read one story, put it away, take a break. At least it forces you for anywhere between 15 to 20 pages to actually sit and read you will really enjoy this book it's so so beautiful the cover is awesome one of the best covers i have uh, seen in a in a in a novel really for me and i really really enjoyed this book you'll love it too you will you will the next book is the death of vivek og by akweke imezi amazing now let me tell you something about this book if you want to cry if you want to connect with yourself and your identity if you want to read something about identity about love unconditional love whether it be family friends whatever just support unconditional support but you also want to read a little bit of struggle you know a little bit of something deeper you know this book is the one okay this follows Vivek Oji, as it says in the title. And Vivek Oji is a young... Mm, I can't even say, because it's, it, it's like... It's like it, it, it follows identity and someone trying to find the true path and journey to their life and who they are and what they're about. Yes, it does say the death of Vivek Oji. So yes, it does open with you knowing that Vivek Oji has died and he has been... Um, he was, he died at, at, uh, a burning of a market and he was placed in front of his mother's doorstep. It was so heartbreaking. It is heart wrenching. It is harrowing. I cried reading this book. It was just like how Mar Ooh, Mar why must yo, it celebrates but identity, friendship, um, you know, family and um, just being true to yourself and being true to who you are. I don't want to give too much away about this book because this book really is beautiful at its core. Everything about it, Akweke and Mezi, they did an amazing job with this book. They were... Uh, this book is going to speak to so many young people. It's going to speak to so many young people who are struggling in the journey of finding themselves and finding their lives and finding, you know, which, which part, path of the world that they want to take and owning and being true to who you are. Oh my God. It's such a beautiful book. And I really, really do recommend that you read it. So, so good. And now the last two books are thrillers. And these are for people who want to 
read something a little bit more darker you don't want to read uh, contemporary fiction you don't want to read that kind of stuff you don't want to read romance you don't want to read the soppy stuff you don't want that kind of stuff right but you do want to get into reading the first book that i would recommend is this this is the turn of the key by ruth Ware. now ruth Ware is a well-known well-renowned thriller writer uh, she's written quite a number of books but my favorite one by her is definitely this one this <laughs> easy to read very very easy to follow along but keeps you in suspense right the thrill is just like wild and you're just wondering oh my god oh my god it's a page turner you want to see what's going to happen you want to see what's going to happen so this follows the um, life of a young woman by the name of rowan who the book opens with rowan being in prison and she sends she is writing a letter to a man whom she hopes would be her lawyer or would take her case or fight for her case um, and she's explaining in these letters to the lawyer or the barrister or the advocate I don't know at this point what we're gonna call this person but she explains in these letters that this is what happened and she's being wrongfully accused of something so she's in jail waiting to be sentenced for murder so it's in that time span like the current which is the now where she's in jail and before she went into jail so she answers um a news article in the newspaper or something like that of a family that is requiring nanny a nanny uh, uh, to to look after their children in their house in the beautiful mountainous uh, area of Scotland and all of that and Rowan has recently just come out of a job she's struggling to make ends meet and the pay for this is looking so good and she's thinking you know what I need a fresh start I need to get out of here I've been through the most I need to go and she starts she answers the um, the ad and gets the job but as soon as she gets into that house, this family lives in a smart house. So everything is controlled with a uh, with your phone. Everything is controlled with a remote control. There's this, um, what is it? Is it the happy something? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but um, there is an app that controls everything in the house. So from lights to window shutters, this, this, this. It's an old, on the outside, the house is very old, uh, olden. I don't know if it's Victorian, but on the inside, it's a complete smart house. And she's fascinated by this until things start going awry. And then a murder happens. And then at this point, Rowan is in jail and you're trying to figure out what is going on. Really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, highly, highly recommend this book. I really enjoyed it. Don't even want to lie. The twists and turns in this book were wild. Wild, wild, wild. So I really recommend this book. If you want to try it out, definitely do. Then, lastly, this is the book that got me into reading. This was one of the first books that got me into reading. I remember when I started reading again. I've always liked reading. But when I started reading again, I was reading the first four books. The first one was The Silent Patient by Alex McAleides. I highly recommend that you read that one as well if you want to get started into thriller and you want to start reading and just not being able to put a book down, I recommend that one. But one of the next ones after that was this. This is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. <gasps> this book had me mad. This book had me feeling some type of way. This book was just like, oh my God, what happens next? This book had me feeling like, ah, oh, wow, it's a mess. Okay, it's a mess. Okay, this, what is going on here? It is a mess. So, <laughs> this book uh, follows the life of, I forget, Vanessa. My dog Vanessa, hello. I was just about to say I forget her name. This life follows the <laughs> this book follows the life of uh, Vanessa, who is so the book is also set in a dual time span where Vanessa is older, she's in her mid thirties, but it also follows the life of Vanessa when she was younger in high school, in uh, at around fifteen, sixteen. So she develops a relationship in high school relationship with a one of her teachers and fast forward to 2017 so there's very very big uh, descriptive phrases very big descriptive scenes 
passages in this book that are very upsetting to read because already you can tell a 15 year old with a 30 something year old teacher he grooms her there's themes of grooming here there's themes of uh, underage you know relationship uh, you can go as far as to say pedophilia at this point um uh, you can um there's really really difficult uh subjects here that that uh would make one feel some type of way when you're reading it so it's a hard read but it's a very good book because it's easy to read so she develops this relationship with her teacher alex or alan strain jacob strain <laughs> jacob strain i read this over a year ago gents like i'm tired she developed a relationship relationship with her, her teacher and fast forward so it, it gives you little bits and pieces from then from back then when she was 15 what happened with her teacher and all of that and fast forward to 2017 when she's older and she's 33 or something like that and jacob strain is now in the news because he is getting getting arrested and guess for what you know what it is so vanessa fights herself quite a bit because she feels like they had a relationship and she doesn't believe that jacob strain could do this you know they were lovers and all of this it's very upsetting to read it's very dark it's definitely is very dark and it, it reminds me a lot of um lolita by Vladimir nobakov however that is very very hard to read that one is very upsetting and it's also just harder to read in terms of literally I don't know what I just said, but it's, it's actually a lot harder to read. This, on the other hand, is much easier to read. And um, in terms of just the writing, it's much easier to digest. Really good. Highly recommend. One of my faves. Can't even lie about it. Really, really one of my faves. And that's pretty much it. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like, comment, subscribe, and also click the bell so you know the next time I upload. Also share this video and repost it. And repost and share and tag me so that I can see. It really helps me and my channel out a lot. And my social media platforms out a lot. A lot. A lot uh, but I'm gonna go now this is the third video I filmed so I can't even speak at this point I really hope you enjoyed the video I'm gonna go and I'll see you in the next video happy reading <laughs>